What is up guys and gals and welcome back to Dead in Bermuda. My name is Splattercat. I think we should be finishing up the game today. I think I actually finished exploring the island. Pretty sure we're done. We had to find some wizard or something like that. But first things first, I know people showed a little bit of discontent with me using Yuri as the hero. I actually went back and reloaded a save. Not because of the discontent, but right after I did it I went back and reloaded a save and I made Julia the chosen one. So Julia should be in a better place right now to finish off the final combat or do... Whatever it is we're supposed to be doing at this point, I'm going to put them all in the fatigue bay for right now. I call it the fatigue bay because it sounds more science fiction-y. Makes me happier. It sounds more like something real. And so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and let's check out some of these new locations. On this side, there's a message in a bottle. Let's read the message. Who wants to read it? Julia? You open the bottle and read the message inside. You can't believe your eyes. There's a big secret here and you won't tell anybody about it. You feel smarter. Really? She got plus 10 intelligence from doing that? Jesus. That's actually a pretty major stat increase right there. Although I think she had really high... Did she have high intelligence to begin with? I can't remember at this point. She has pretty good intelligence. So that explains why I was able to max so many skills out. A lot of other people said that they focused on intelligence until people were up at 60 or 70. And then they went for it. But honestly, since you only level up like 10 times, I don't know what the... If, like, with a character who sucks at being intelligent, he's not good at doing intelligent stuff. It sort of raises the question whether or not you can get intelligence high enough to actually put points in other things before you cap out. And I suppose you could just stand around, but I don't know why you would want to, because the game only has so much content to offer. An X drawn on the ground. I got a bunch of fatigued people. We'll deal with that in just a minute. Got a cave with a 15 next to it. There's another one over here, too. That's got some weird tweaker looking guy with a sword. Hold on, I'm trying to find him. Where'd he go? There he is. This was the other one that I was interested in where he might be the wizard. I don't know if he's got a bow on his head or whether that's some kind of weird constructed mushroom cranial attachment or something, but we'll figure it out. You stumble upon a weird scrawny dude presenting a variety of items on some sort of display rack. He holds a fake magical stick in his hand. Oh, I didn't even see the magic wand until they put the PNG. Until they did the overlay right there, I didn't even see that he had a magical stick. Okay, want to play with my magical stick, says the guy in the forest? I don't know if I trust you. He's stealth and fighting. You approach him to say hello, but he speaks first in a deep voice. Choose. Take the chalice, the wand, or the weapon. I don't know. The weapon? Good choice. As you take the blade, you feel that your fighting skills have improved. You feel invincible. When you turn back, the dude has vanished. You can now search the face. Oh, this was the wizard. You can now search for the beast lair and take it down. Damn, she's almost at 100 fighting skill. Nobody mess with Julia. She'll poke your eyes out in the middle of combat. She'll be like, doink! And be like, oh god, Scoob, I've been blinded. They're sitting by the fire talking about the fact that we're about to go hunt a monster in a cave. I'm not really so sure. My internet's been out now for like two days. I know you guys probably saw my Twitter. It's been a little bit weird. I really, I have no idea. My guess is that, so, about a year ago this happened, where the internet was out for like two days, and it's because Caltrans severed a fiber optic cable when they were digging on the highway. I'm assuming it's probably one of the same exact things. Because, you know, Caltrans. Don't learn from mistakes, don't work hard, don't try. Caltrans. A California institution. So anyways, <laughs> Caltrans always cracks me up. Like, you'll drive past a Caltrans worksite. If you don't know what Caltrans is, they're the company that's responsible for building roads in California. And you'll always, and it's probably one of the most mismanaged bureaus, like, in the entire United States. Like, it's bad. It's really, really bad. Lots and lots of jokes about Comcast. So anyways, I want to dig this X up. What's inside this X? Give me all of your X's. Okay, I don't want your X's. There's a reason you left them, but I get what you're saying. You dig a hole with your bare hands for a while, and then you reach a small wooden box. You open it hastily expecting jewels, but you found something even more valuable. A full set of beautiful dried sausage, perfectly preserved. That does nothing for me. That would have been really helpful at the beginning of the game, but as of right now, it's not. But Caltrans, anyways, back to the subject at hand. Caltrans is responsible for building roads and, like, maintaining things here. And anytime you drive past a Comcast site, you can expect to see, like, two guys leaning on shovels, one guy reading in the truck, and one guy wearing a hard hat to talk on the phone. Because only at Con Caltrans is talking on the phone so dangerous and so difficult that you have to wear a helmet. This cave reeks of danger. You clearly hear screams of agony coming from the depths. You don't want to go in there. The hell I don't. I'm trying to beat the game. 
Trembling with fear, you enter the dark cave. After a few steps down, you enter a large circular room lit by the faint glow of a torch. On the walls, you catch a glimpse of tribal signs painted with blood. The ground is literally made of skulls and bones. In a dark corner of the room, you notice a large beast-like form moving, turning its back to you, and judging from the noises, it must be devouring something. You don't have time to think about your next move. The beast turns around and jumps in front of you. It must have smelled you since the beginning. Let's fight, Julia! The beast is standing in front of you. Yeah, she has no strength, but her intelligence okay. Find a weak spot! Yeah! You give him a good hit, but it seems to have only pissed him off. It grabs your leg and prepares to throw you away. I am going to endure the blow. Please don't fail. Yay, we didn't fail. You managed to escape its catch, but now you are lying on the floor. It charges right for you. Hide in the corner. The beast now has its back offered in front of you. You can make a move. Let's hit it on the back of the neck. With 100 fighting, you only have 50-50 chance. Damn, son. You try to hit the beast in the back, but you are too slow. The beast flips and throws its arm in your face. You fly across the room, badly hurt. We're going to continue fighting, I guess. Oh, we got to do all that shit over again? Jesus. Okay. Well, we're going to do the same things we did before because those are our best chances with the coin flips. Eventually, you'd expect to fail, though. You hit the beast hard enough for it to fall to the ground. You can give it another hit. Grab it and punch it. You hit the beast lying on the floor until you're out of breath. After a while, you realize the beast doesn't budge anymore. You've won. You can't believe you've made it. You may well be the chosen one after all. You search the cave, and amongst the piles of bones, you find an old radio. You take it back to the camp and prepare to report the good news to Zeus. She only got seven injury? It said I was badly wounded. That's not bad. Oh, we gotta go talk to the geezer. That's right. I was like, wait, which one is Zeus? It's this guy. Let us talk with the Zeuses. As you approach the spot where Zeus was meditating, you notice that he's not alone this time. Every member of the tribe is gathered around him. We have slain the beast. The prophecy is fulfilled. As you say these words, you notice that Zeus has returned to his hypnotic trance. You can only hear him mumbling, It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hey, wake up. Athena, make him wake up. That I can't. He didn't use the usual potion. I don't know what's happening. And what about the prophecy and the powers? I knew it would come to this. I warned him someday that somebody would fulfill the prophecy. Wait, what do you mean? What Mr. Handsome is trying to say is that there never was any prophecy. You see, the beast has been annoying us for a while, and it's simple. He eats too much meat. It's hard to hunt after it's devoured half the jungle's animals. Wait, so you tricked me? Well, not really. You brought peace and love to the island. That should be its own reward. Yeah. I like things to be a little bit more on the golden jewels end of the spectrum instead of just, like, feeling good and internally feeling fuzzy. You kidding me? I was promised a way to escape. Oh, there is no leaving. We've been trapped here for centuries, and so are you now. My friend, we are here to celebrate. Forget about your troubles and have a drink, he winks. Before leaving them to their party, you discreetly take Zeus' antennas with you. With that and the radio you found, you may be able to send a distress call. Then you leave the crowd without looking back, your head pounding with rage as you hear their laughs. Your last hope of leaving the island resides in this radio that you should be able to use at camp. Damn, we're hella depressed now. We're like, no, my life is over. Oh, we've got the radio over. Damn, that looks sketchy. I noticed that there are twigs as part of the construction. This looks really sketchy. So, does it take a smart person to use it? Stand on the radio and call for the helpses. And then we need her to not be depressed anymore. So, who is the most depressed of us all? Stand around the fire and let us never be depressed ever again. And then I'm also going to cook some meals real fast. Yay for meals! Okay, so it looks like it's actually going to take a while. Well, at least we made eight tasty meals. I mean, that's pretty good. We made ten meals. I like tasty meals. I haven't had a tasty meal in a while because I have no cooking skill. In real life, my cooking is like two. I could basically ruin cereal if I tried hard enough. Sometimes I make scrambled eggs. Sometimes I make pancakes or waffles, and I can make spaghetti, and I can make tortellini. But aside from that, there's not a whole lot of things that I am skilled at. Actually, I make okay steaks, too. I can make decent steaks, although most of it's, like, pre-prepared, like, random glazes and things like that. I mean, people are always like, oh, this steak's really good when they come over to my house. I'm like, thanks. I based it in stuff I bought at the store, and then I pretend like I made it from scratch. Yay! Yay for victory. 
I suppose we're just gonna hang out right now and wait for this to work out properly. Let's go ahead and make the fire more intense because it needs to be. And then I'll put people on harvesting just in case we needed to get a vest, which is messed in the west. Put that right there. And Julia, I would like you to gather, I don't know, supplies or something. That sounds good. There is no meat in your stock. No, our soup shall be wanting. Okay, so get it because there's stock. Yeah, never mind. I'm not going to go there right now. I already went there, but I'm going to pretend like I didn't. Radio signal, somebody come find us. Unless you have some kind of booster, though, like that little radio right there. Kind of depends. I mean, obviously, there's no branding and there's no anything else on it, but that radio looks slightly suspect for trying to send things a long distance. It looks suspect. There are ways that you can amplify the signal, but shit, I'm not a radio technician. I have no idea. I know absolutely nothing about radio waves or radio technology. I mean, I know that it makes music come out of my car and that it makes music come out of my radio, and that's about as far as my expertise goes. We there? Okay. After hours and hours of searching for a signal, you finally hear a voice on the radio. Your heart is pounding as you exchange a few words about your location. Apparently, a helicopter is on its way to rescue you. Yay! We're holding our Johnson. Wait, so that's it? Oh no! That's so depressing. Oh, that's such a downer. Why? Why, Horrid Island? Why would you do these things to me? Is that a picture of all the characters as gods? That sucks, dude. I mean, being a god would be pretty legit, but still, at the same time... I kind of wanted to go home. It's been like 160 days since I played PlayStation. That's a little upsetting to me. Well, damn. Apparently, we become blue people. That sucks. We got smurfificated. Say that 10 times fast. Smurfificated. So, is that. Can I continue my game and we could just go forever? Like, what happens here? I'm curious. I just want to find out real fast. It looks like that's pretty much the end. Well, at least they got to be gods. I mean, there's a slight trade-off here. So is that done now? Oh, never mind. It's from a day before. Okay, well, my name is Splattercat. This is Dead in Bermuda. I will see you all later. Hi, do, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this series. Another one down. Another one flagged for completion on ye old playlist list. Hi, do, everybody.